Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land. Please abide in my Scout Ruth Plus. Um, what's happened since the last recording session? Nothing serious. Um, pretty big news week, as I'm sure you saw. Also, we had uh, we had a baby. We had a baby. Hold on. Zero L eight C eight Y W C. Um, yeah, surprise. <laughs> well, not not surprised that we had the baby, because we, I mean, that the baby was coming, surprised that the baby came, although it wasn't a surprise to us, because we knew, oh my, what a, oh, what a beautiful blessing, <laughs> how about that, because I'm not sure if you can tell from the uh, rambling train of thought so far, I am a little tired, I think this video is probably, you know, the, the first baby video, is hitting a lot earlier than most people would have expected this due to a combination of things the first that what dude this is the greatest I mean I was gonna say this is the greatest gift I could get that's not true as we have found out this week however it is still very helpful I do appreciate it Let, let's not take that away from it um but yeah it's a combination of two things one is that like the backlog is I mean, on the low side, but I don't want people to feel bad like I was pressured to come back. And really, the way that this happened. So today's Saturday, and uh, we had the baby on Monday. Stayed in the hospital Monday and Tuesday. We were discharged on Wednesday. Mother and, and daughter both healthy. I was going to say happy and healthy. I, I would say that's fair, but occasionally they both go through, you know, little periods where they're not having an amazing time, either due to surgery, recovery, or, you know, pooping their pants. And I think you can figure out who's who. Um, but but we're, we're getting there. I did not mean to press that button. So, uh, you know, it, it has only... I mean, I guess she, at, at this point she's only five days old. Time has kind of... It's, it's lost a little bit of meaning recently. Because, you know, I mean, the, the sleep is, is weird. But really the way that it happened is uh, yesterday, Kate was like... You know, now that we have the baby, you know, are you thinking about getting back to work? And, you know, it had been percolating in my head a little bit. First couple of days were chaos. <laughs> it, it, like, not, not just because you have the baby, but because it happens, like, so fast. Like, you know, the, the delivery took place, and then immediately from then, you're like, what's that sound? Oh my god, what's this? Okay, uh, you know, the doctor's like, do you know how to put on a diaper? And I'm like, yeah, and then I, my hands are shaking, and I can't quite get it on. Then you're like, okay, now do that 17 times in the next uh, 24 hours, and you're, you're good to go, and you're calling nurses. And you're, I'm sleeping in a glorified gym mat on the ground, nurses come in uh, every 17 minutes and go, oh, there's a little bit of blood on the hospital bed, we gotta check you out, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? Anyway, so it, it's just, it's pandemonium, right? Like, it's it's bedlam. But, uh, really, we, we both came to the same conclusion, which is, you know, I'm not getting back to 100% capacity, um, you know, today or, or, or any time in the very near future, but we definitely have hit the point where things are calm now, you know, we got a good routine. Um, we, we, we got a good kind of like sleep tandem that we're on and I, I gotta say it I don't want to make people jealous. I think we got a good baby. I think we got a good one she uh, You know is healthy weight healthy length uh, Healthy head size which was you know immediately I think everybody's like, when the kid's born, you know, they're like, oh my god, it's my child. But I was like, oh my god. Oh no, that's my child. <laughs> She's got a noggin, that's all I'm saying. And uh, honestly, like, she she sleeps a lot, at least for this, this newborn period. Things can always change, but we, we got it. We got the diapers, we got the burps, we got the how to soothe a baby, we got the feeding and the apps and the trackers and the... You get the idea. It's good, dude. It's it's fine. Now, people, you know, they, they ask, like, how are you doing? As if, like, you know... I mean, I'm not gonna say that it's not a good question, because it's a lot of stuff, you know? I'm sure it hits different people differently, and, you know, also depends on how, uh, you know, the child's behavior is as well. Honestly, we've been tired and busy but otherwise like it's pretty low stress and i'm being 100 percent serious i'm not saying that having you know a newborn is low stress but but this newborn at present 
is is you know they they're settled into a decent routine. Thank you, thank you, Bumbo. She's she's sleeping when she you'd expect her to sleep, which is always. She's eating when you expect her to eat, which is once every three hours, and it's uh. I mean, it's a trip, dude. It's it's really weird. Like it's surreal to be talking. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Especially, like, apparently I'm playing The Binding of Isaac at the same time as having this conversation. I don't even know where to start on the anecdote farm. Because, like, it's... It's been a week, right? Like, it's been a, a heck of a week. It's been a week of news, obviously. But also then on top of that, you know, the, the amount of personal stuff that we've had going on. And then on top of that, you know, the fact that the, we're sleep-deprived to a pretty decent extent. Even, like, I, I can't really complain. I probably had, like, four or five hours of sleep last night. But it's, like, it's not good sleep. <laughs> At least not yet. Let's see what we got here. Brother Bobby. Void. Uh, I'll void it. I'll void it. I don't mind. Let's let's get weird. It's it's a one-of-a-kind episode, right? Because, um, you know, like, you're going to bed at midnight. Mostly just because your body's like, I'm done. If, like the what, what was funny is like we did what I think is probably a classic new parent thing where like the first 24 hours of having the baby you're like this thing is gonna spontaneously combust it will implode in some horrible manner and it's gonna be our fault if if we're not staring at this thing like 24 7 so Kate would stare at the baby for like four hours and then be like I'm tired can you stare at the baby and I'd be like yes ma'am give her a salute like I'd love nothing more and you just sort of you know you, you you realize after you after you got you know 24 hours of observing this child you're like it's mostly just burps and occasionally ex explosive uh, flatulence and uh, then they go like eh, and then they kind of roll over and soothe themselves and if they if they're hungry you pick them up and feed them but yeah you, you go to bed at like midnight and then you set an alarm for like two, and you're like, this is feeding number one. And you set an alarm for five, and you're like, this is feeding number two. And then, you know, we're, we're trading off on the feedings. Which is fair, but I will say I have a distinct biological disadvantage. But uh, we're, we're trading off on the feedings, but you know... Like when Kate's up and she's feeding the baby, I'm waking up a little bit, and when I'm up and feeding the baby, Kate's waking up a little bit. Because it's not you don't just feed the baby, roll over, go back to sleep. You know the baby cries a little bit. And then you know you you do the smell test, and you're like, oh, it's got a, a diaper. When you change the diaper, she cries like crazy. And but you know, I, honestly, I, I, I we we've settled into like a nice routine here where. I, I'm, I'm not going to be recording a lot, I'll tell you, like, today we'll probably do one video and then be on our way, because I am... <laughs> First off, it, it's a lot of work, with uh, a, a lot of baby work, for sure, but then also, like, a lot of laundry and a lot of dishes, for sure. I, I would never dispute that. Not not that many people told me about the dishes. They all told me, when, when you first see your child's face, it'll unlock a new part of your brain both love and also like stress and anxiety that you didn't know existed. I didn't need to be told that. I found that out for myself firsthand immediately upon the imprinting. What people should have been telling you is you're going to be washing like a lot of bottles. Which is fine. Right? We're not actually washing that many bottles, but you know, for night feeding and stuff. I'm not getting too into the minutia cuz I mean for two reasons. One is if you're not a a parent or you don't care, you're like I don't care, you know? It is kind of a self-evident prophecy um and then the other one is that I've, I've learned already telling people what parental methods you're using is a good way to get in an argument <laughs> a lot of like you know you gotta feed the baby this way you even not so much even just the manner of feeding like whether you're, you're using like some natural feeding or some formula or something like that but even like you know the way you hold the baby during feeding oh you're doing the you're doing the sideways uh cradle hold you got to do the football hold like the the whole the, the mommy blogosphere kind of scares the crap out of me i don't really want to invite that evil into my life uh let's not call it evil but you know what i mean anyway because <laughs> because i said it a second ago um, but yeah, people people should have mentioned the, the mechanic stuff, the, the dishes a little bit more, the laundry. Either way. So yeah, it's, it's, it's been a week. Um, 
I mean, I, I, it's not really like I'm intending to open this up with like some TLC, a, a baby story kind of stuff. There's been some funny stuff this happened though, for sure. Um, the baby has a large head. Uh, such a large head, in fact, that the doctors were slightly concerned on birth until they saw the size of my head. Which is, it's hard to tell because I was wearing like a, a surgical cap at the time, you know, for, for sanitary reasons. They didn't want any of my hair to fall out uh, and, and impede what was going on downstairs. But, um, that's a joke, but also the real reason, I suppose. Um, but, uh, yeah, they were like, whoa, big, big-headed baby. And then they were like, does dad have a big head? And I'm like, I've got a big head. I'm sure they hear that a lot. So they went, uh, like, the hats fit you? And I said, one size fits all hats normally do not fit me. And then it's like they breathed a sigh of relief. They were like, okay, this baby's probably fine. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, it's wild. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I've, I've had some surreal events happen to me in my life before. Not, not like on an... In Absurd level like you know, I've never been to outer space. <laughs> I've never I've never woken up on the International Space Station Or anything like that, but but in terms of like relatability I don't know if there's anything as surreal as like, you know going to the hospital on Monday morning and Then like on Tuesday morning you wake up on the floor next to a cradle or a bassinet that that holds a, a human infant your human infant it's it changes your life in like in a, a millisecond hold on I'm thinking I'm thinking let's let's suck that one up so yeah I mean in in terms of uh, <laughs> in terms of baby anecdotes it's weird because like you know some of them are just like like sentimental stuff that I don't necessarily want to uh, get into just not out of like privacy, but just because it's kind of like, you know, it's it's sweet and it's sentimental, but it's also kind of I don't know sensitive, I suppose. You know, it does it changes your your life in a big way. It changes your brain in a big way. You know, you 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 have like um, like I've felt responsible for stuff before, but the degree of responsibility that I feel for my daughter right now is that like. A level that I, 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 I could conceive of previously, but could not actually, like, get myself to feel it. But now that I'm there, I'm like, I would flip over a freaking truck to... Like, you get, you get this, the parental strength, right? <laughs> you, you now understand it. Here, I, I got a little anecdote for you, for sure. So this morning, you know, it, again, not, I'm, you'll have to excuse me, I'm not at my best. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've been making fun, like, you know, at the hospital, they're like, you gotta, do you have a pediatrician? And I'm like, were you supposed to have a pediatrician lined up in advance? And they're like, oh, do you have a family doctor? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, are they taking patients uh, for in-person screenings during COVID? And I'm like, I don't know, nobody told us to look this stuff. They're like, you gotta go see a, a pediatrician one week after the baby. So anyway, I was calling up pediatricians and we got it sorted. But the, the messages that I was leaving on their voicemail was like, hey, uh, this is... My wife and I had a baby like two days ago and we got it and I'm trying I'm not like stupid You know, I'm just stupid because of sleep deprivation and also with being unfamiliar territory Half of the messages are just like rambling two minute long, you know uh, Macaroni where and then at the end I'm just like ah, I'm sorry. Just call us which is how we got sorted by the way, but uh yeah, so this morning, you know, I'm a little sleep deprived. Kate has been up for a little bit feeding the baby, so, you know, it's my turn. She goes, hey, the baby, uh, she, she's got a, a poo-poo pee-pee diaper. I say, no problem. I, over the past week, I've become a, a, a diaper. I'm not going to avoid that, I think. There's no point. I, I'd rather save the Krampus' head charge. I've become kind of like a diaper expert, you know? Because when, and, and again, this is like new parent stuff. When you first get the... The, the baby, you are concerned that you're gonna murder it accidentally. Um, forgetting that, you know, you yourself were a baby, and you yourself were a baby in like, you know, maybe like the 1990s or the early 2000s, or, you know, it, it depends how old you are. I was a baby in the late 80s, right? And talking to my parents who are here and, and you know, thankfully have been masked up the whole time and are, are pretty much out of that potential, like, COVID window I was talking about earlier. Um, 
you know, they were like, they're telling me stuff that they did when they were parents, and I was like, they let, that was legal back then? So check this out, I didn't know this, apparently this was common wisdom in 1988, I'm not trying to sell my parents out. You give a baby a pacifier, sometimes if you don't have it, like, clipped, um, to, to something, then when they spit the pacifier out, it, it goes on the ground. My mom was like, oh yeah, um, yeah, you used to spit your pacifier out. Your father and I would just pick it up, put it in our mouths, and then put it back in your mouth. So can we talk about the insanity of this for a brief moment, for so many different reasons? First off, that does not clean anything. If it, if it fell on the... I'm not saying, you know, dropping a pacifier on the ground is so dirty, like there's a huge risk of, like, illness or whatever. It's more like, if you think it's dirty, then you should probably do something more to clean it than to put it in something that's also dirty, even if you do share, you know, the DNA. Either way, it, it's, it, you know, first off, I think it's ineffective. That's step one. Step two, that's gross, dude! If my baby's... First off, I, I, look, I, we'll get to this point as parents, I'm sure. I'm not super grossed out by it, but ideally, if you were like, hey, that baby just had that thing in their mouths, do you want to put it in your mouth? I would be like, no. That's gross. It's got baby spit all over it. Now, if I had to do it, you, you gotta do it, right? But, you know, willingly, just as kind of like a, eh, no thank you. Secondly, wet things that fall on the ground need to be washed. Because they instantly attract dirt and hair, and especially if you got pets, like, like, game over, right? Just, just, if you're gonna put it in your mouth, at least just rinse it under the sink for a second. It's, it's crazy. Anyway. So, that, that was an aside. But, I'm starting to realize, you know, how, how the, the twisted figure you see before you has, <laughs> has managed to get here. I'm starting to learn my own origin story. By the way, and I'll say this before we move on, too. The other thing that was kind of unexpected about having the baby is, like, A, it changes you, but it also definitely changed the way that I looked at my parents. Like, I was, I, you know, as you get older, I wasn't really, like, a, a problem child or, like, a bad teenager or anything. But, you know, there have been times where, like, you know, my mom has, like, been like, call me when you get there, and then I get there, and I'm like, woo! And then it's, like, 12 hours later, and I haven't called her. And then she'll send me a message. Well, it, like, this is in the distant past. Because um, she knows I'm boring now. So she doesn't worry as much. If anything, I worry about her a little bit more. But she'll, uh, you know, I, I, that was the way it would be, I don't know, when I was in, like, my early 20s, maybe. Yo, he's pog, dude. And now I'm, like, as soon as I had that baby, I was like, I gotta tell my mom I'm sorry. <laughs> Just picturing, you know, my daughter, like, I was like, hey, yeah, you can go to Burning Man, just text me when you get there, and then, you know, it's 36 hours later, she hasn't texted me, and I'm like, you know, I, w I would be unpogged. So, weird weirdly enough, having having a child, at least, I mean, it's so early, right, it's only been five, four or five days, um, it's, it's kind of changed the way I, I see myself as a child as well. I don't, I don't think I was a bad, or have been a bad son, but I'm like, man, there's some times I definitely could have been better. But I think that's just the journey of, of life, to some extent. They probably feel the same about their parents, their parents probably feel the same about them to some extent. You know, or about their, the parents after, after them. See, I, I, I'm just being honest, I can't really talk. <laughs> I have... <laughs> Even, like, when my wife and I have conversations with each other, we're so sleep-deprived that... T saying like one sentence, uh, it it might take like forty seconds. Like here's here's a, a a classic sentence that like my wife will say to me right now. Before I, you know, uh, uh, go to sleep, um, there's a thing in the thing. Could you get it for me? And then I go, yeah, sure. And then three seconds later, I go. What'd you just ask me to do? And then she goes... I don't remember. <laughs> Which is scary, because for all the things at the hospital... Uh, you know, they go over so many different safety precautions, obviously. Do you know what they do after that? They go, hey, bring your car around to the front. Bring your, your 4,000 pound... A uh, death machine up to the front. We're gonna strap your baby into a roller coaster seat, and then you're on your way. Like they, at no point do they go like, "Are you okay to drive? Because you've been sleeping on, 
you know, a, a quarter inch piece of plywood for for three days being woken up at random intervals like you're in, you know, you're a prisoner of war or something like that. They're just like, okay, see ya. We need the bed. Um, by the way, our, our treatment at the hospital was, was very good. I would say, people, especially if you don't live in Canada, people are always curious about the Canadian medical system. I can only speak to my own, you know, experiences. But, you know, it, it was... Very, very smooth. The personnel were amazing. The equipment, state-of-the-art. The actual accommodations were pretty terrible. I, I found myself going a little Gordon Ramsay, right? Like I'd be like, this exposed drywall! Come on! Is this what I'm paying zero dollars a night for? I mean, we're paying taxes, but... I want to see, by the way, because I, I tweeted a picture... Like the the morning after we had the baby, you know, they're like. By by the way, the husband not. I'm I'm willing to admit to this, okay? The husband not allowed to order from the ho the the hotel, <laughs> the hospital cafeteria. So maybe just maybe I put my finger on the scale a little bit when I called in my wife's order. I said, you know what else she'd like over top? Two pieces of multi-grain toast with butter. Okay, I'm not afraid. If that if that makes me a criminal, go ahead, lock me up, officer. Lock me up. Make my kid an orphan, because I I. Bilked the taxpayer for two pieces of bread, but just remember I didn't take Serb, okay? You can't take me away. I'm, I'm still a, a net positive in the ledger But anyway, we ordered it was like ooh, what this sounds nice a Belgian waffle And then it also it had like an asterisk next to it, which was like you can only get this Before 10 15 a.m. So I was like oh that makes sense because they probably got to put the waffle iron away so they got more space to make lunch. And then when it came up, it was like a... <laughs> it was like a, to a little tiny toaster waffle. Um, like, not even an Eggo, but like if you went to like a, a grocery store that was like, We don't sell Eggo, but we got like Wago. You'd be like, is it like Eggo? And they'd be like, yeah. It's like the Irregulars from, from the Eggo factory. Anyway. Um... I, I, I want to delve into the hospital's financials because I got to know how much they bill the the waffle cost. I bet that waffle is like a $12 waffle if you look at their internal financials. That's just my guess. Anyway, I'm not here to critique the system. It, it was fine. It, 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 again, every the medical treatment was amazing. And, you know, there's... I don't, I don't want to say there's no cost, but, you know... Because there, there is a cost, but, like, you get it no matter how much the cost is for you, if you know what I mean when I say that. You know? It either costs you something or it doesn't, and you get the same treatment either way. But regardless, you know, we're not really getting into that. Um, but, yeah, the, the, the actual, you know, building itself, I was a little bit, like, anti-pogged, but that's okay. Whatever. You know, you, you're going to have a... a Eight and a half pound human child, you know, ripped from your body. You're gonna be like, whoa! <laughs> How old is this sink? This light fixture is from the 1980s. You know, you know they had other other things to spend their budget on. Anyway, I don't even remember what the heck I was talking about. But here's my anecdote. Okay, this happened this very morning. So this is after, and I'm like I'm at my peak now. Compared to how I've been for the entire week so far. Monday was like, is a wash, you know? You ha you have the kid, you're emotional, everybody's emotional, nobody remembers anything, it's overwhelming. The, the nurses come in every two seconds, they're like, hey, if you want the baby to live, here's a list of 900 things we're going to tell you to do. Um, and you're like, yeah, I, wanna, I want the baby to live, can you go over that again? And they're like, I gotta go! Plenty of babies here today! And you're like, alright, I think I got it. It turns out, it's not that... Hard. I don't want to, you know, make it too sensitive, but you put the baby on their back to sleep. That's. I mean, <laughs> this is pretty much it. You know, and you don't don't leave the baby unattended. Otherwise, it could escape through an open window and have uh, incredible adventures in downtown Manhattan. Like uh, when it cr climbs across the girder on that. Cause you've seen Baby's Day Out. You watch John Tron probably. I've never seen it, but I've seen the highlights. Anyway, 
And then like Tuesday is like, oh, you're like, this is the first day with the baby. Every two seconds, you're like, diaper, breathing. Okay, we're good to go. Uh, and then Wednesday, we took her home. And that was just like, you know, grandparents coming over. And I like, I've never seen... Kate's parents in particular were like... Not that, not that my parents don't love their granddaughter. But I, you know, because I'm the son-in-law to Kate's parents. I've never seen them so like kind of lovey-dovey, like they're in love with this this human being. It's it's very touching to see. Today is the day where I'm like, okay, I, I can do a little me time. I even like I, I mailed a letter today. <laughs> I ran an errand. I feel, I'm tired, don't get me wrong, but like, I feel like that's something you just gotta get used to. So here's my anecdote, okay? Kate woke me up uh, at like, I don't know, it was maybe like 9 a.m. Uh, on and off sleep, but weird sleep where you don't feel like, you really rested that well, because every sound, you're like, I gotta go. Um, and uh, she goes, I think her diaper is uh, dirty. Okay? So that's fine. Obviously, I'm, I'm the king of the diapers. I'm, I'm the, the hero of the diaper uh, clan in the household. Change her diaper, no problem. Put her back in the suit. Zip it up. Put her on the bed, and I'm just kind of, like, playing with her, and she's going like, good. That's a good sound, I'm learning. Um, and then Kate did a gasp that is like something you don't want to hear when you have a, a newborn child that you're, you know, caring for. And I went, what, what, what? And then she pointed and there was like, what the heck is happening here? There's an enormous puddle forming on our, our duvet. And she's clearly gone to the bathroom again. And you're like, ha ha, classic baby story. Just wait. Kate goes, what the heck happened? How did it soak through the diaper already? And I, I was like, this is a mystery I gotta solve. So I, I picked up the, our, our daughter and I put her on the changing table. I unzipped her suit. Guess what? Didn't give her a diaper. I I've probably changed 30 diapers this week is my... Because it starts slow. Day one, day two, they, they're not making that many. Here on day five, it's like every hour there's a, there's a new mess to experience. Um... Yeah, so, on on this fateful uh, experience, um, by my bad, I took off the dirty diaper, wiped her clean, and the whole time was going like, who's a good baby? Yo, oh, the clean baby has logged on. Zipped up her suit, never gave her a clean diaper. Just, and then of course it's like doubly bad now, obviously. Whatever, dude, let's re-roll it. Because then you got, not only do you got to wash the duvet, which we already did, but now I gotta, you know, put her in a new suit. It causes all sorts of compound problems, but you know, it's it's the journey of the, uh, you know, it's, I've never done this before. It's, it's it's a new journey, giving myself a lot of, a lot of tolerance, a lot of forgiveness. I don't have new parent advice because I think that that is uh, kind of a little bit. Um, presumptuous to assume that I have any expertise after five days but the thing that's helped us out a lot so far for sure is just like having a good sense of humor you know there's there's been situations where I like I gotta be honest with you there's been situations where my wife has said things to me and I've been like this woman is drunk <laughs> not on uh, you know any narcotic or anything but just from lack of sleep and, you know, she's got recovery and I, I, I can't even imagine what it's like, right? It, as much as, like, I've got reason to complain, it falls on deaf ears just because of the fact that, you know, I, I also have the easiest job out of the three of us. And I recognize it and I'm grateful for it. But, you know, so what do you do? You just, you know, you go, first off, I'm going to repeat to you what you just said to me and we're both going to laugh about it. And then I'm going to ask you to say what you mean again um, so that, you know, we, we can work together on this. And it's not a one-way street because, again, need I remind you who changed the diaper without putting the fresh diaper in and now, you know, there's no blanket on our bed. But anyway, we're working on it. It's, it's, it's been fun. It's been good and I can't stress enough, you know. I think we got a good baby. I think probably, like, everybody when they meet a baby... They're not going to be like, oh, you guys got a bad one. But it feels like when people say you guys got a good baby, they're, they're actually being, like, very legitimate with us. They're like, does it have any problems feeding? We're like, nah, feeds like a dream. 
Uh, does it use the bathroom regularly? Yeah. Any weirdness in the poops? And I go, oh, extremely weird. And they go, all right, that's good. I'd be concerned if they were normal. Um, and then they're like, you know, did you weigh her recently? And I'm like, yeah. She's like... They, I don't know, I'm not going to get into the mechanics of it. Babies tend to lose a little weight right after they're born. So I'm like, she's lost weight, but it's within the normal range. And they're like, you got a good baby, don't tell anybody. And I'm telling everybody. So anyway, um, this is like one of the most overpowered Isaac runs I've had in a while. I have no memory of how I played it. I've had mom's knife since the first floor, and I almost died. But there you go. We got one in the books. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Again, just for content, like, this is not a sign that it's going to be like, oh, we're getting back into six videos a day ASAP. We may not even have Daily Isaac for a while, but I wanted to check in regardless. And the other thing is, we may. <laughs> we may have Daily Isaac. I don't know. I am getting to uh, the point where I can, you know, I feel like I can eke out that 40 minutes a day for sure. Anyway, for now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See you.